Pastor Ray here with our next devotion. We have just finished the book of 2 Corinthians. So what does that mean for us? Well, we're jumping now back into the book of Acts. And if you're just jumping into these video series and you're not familiar with kind of the track we've taken or the path we've taken, what we did at the beginning of this year, we started at uh, the book of Acts chapter one. And as we were going through the book of Acts, we eventually came to the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul was used by the Lord to plant churches. And as he was going into different regions and planting churches, uh, churches like Thessalonica, churches like Corinth, churches like uh, the church in Philippi, so the Philippian church, when we came across those moments in the book of Acts where Paul is visiting them or, and ministering to them, we, we put a pause in the book of Acts, and then we went to those books in the New Testament that Paul wrote a letter to. So we've been kind of jumping through the scriptures that way. We just finish uh, 2 Corinthians. So that means we're in Acts chapter 18. And just to kind of uh, get us back into the flow now of the book of Acts, Paul uh, enters into Corinth and in Corinth he meets uh, a couple people, a couple. And if you remember their name, it's Aquila and Priscilla. And as he meets them in Corinth, because uh, they're tradesmen just like him, he goes into the synagogues and, and this is that great moment where he goes, Forget it. I'm done. I'm going now to the Greeks. And so Paul plants a church in Corinth and is in Corinth for a year and a half. And Paul is eventually going to now leave Corinth. And as he leaves Corinth, he's going to do a little bit of tour. But one of the places that he stops at is Ephesus. And he's there for a very short time in Ephesus. And he tells the uh, this church that he's planting in Ephesus, I will be back. So he continues to strengthen the disciples in and around that region. And eventually he'll come back to Ephesus that we'll see in chapter 19. And when that happens, we will then jump into the book of Ephesus or the letter of Ephesus uh, that we see in our New Testament and um, go verse by verse through there. So for right now, we're going to close off chapter 18 of the book of Acts. And if you're unfamiliar with the very end of Acts 18, or you missed yesterday's devotion, we are going to see a gentleman by the name of Apollos very powerful name. We don't know a whole lot about Apollos. All we know about Apollos is he's from Alexandria. So he came from Egypt. He is in Corinth and uh, and he's preaching, not necessarily Christ the way Paul would preach Christ, because uh, for, for Apollos, he understood the Old Testament scriptures. He was properly and genuinely preaching the gospel, as we can see from the Old Testament scriptures. He had the Messiah right, that the Messiah was still to come. He might even have a little bit of understanding that Christ, but what we do know and what the scriptures say in the book of Acts is that he was up to the point where he was preaching what uh, John the Baptist was. So he knew about repentance and all signs show that he probably knew about belief in the Messiah as well because of the Old Testament and everything pointing to Jesus. But Aquila and Priscilla are going to point him uh, to Christ. And then Apollos becomes this phenomenal evangelist and apologist for the church, a friend of Paul. And what we even see, if you remember from the book of 1 Corinthians, that at some point the, the Corinthian church also falls in love with Apollos. But then the friction happens and there is that time in 1 Corinthians where uh, Paul saying, are you guys trying to say you're of Apollos or you're of Peter or are you of Paul? By no means we should all be of Christ and be united. So uh, Apollos does great ministry. In fact, some scholars uh, may kind of, not all of them, but some think that Apollos might have wrote the book of Hebrews, but there, there's no biblical evidence to show that. It's all more conjecture. So as I speak about Apollos, as we pick up our verse today from verse 27, it's, it's going to begin with the word and, and it says, and when he, so we're, we're talking about Apollos here. So, and when he uh, wished to cross to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. When he arrived, he greatly helped those who, through grace, believed, and he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that, that the Christ was Jesus. So this is all about, and we're closing off, about this man named Apollos. And what we can see about this man named Apollos is he had a hunger for the things of God. And I think he's just a tremendous example for you and I to continue to remind ourselves, especially for some of us that might even feel like we're in a little bit of a dry season. We talked about that a couple of days ago. 
that, that we should be a, a people that, that love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and soul. And we should have a, a hunger for God and a, and a hunger for the things of God, things like prayer and being in the Word and being around our brothers and sisters in Christ. So this was Apollos. And as a result of Apollos' faithfulness and obedience to the Scriptures and to Christ after Aquila and Priscilla and help take him deeper in his faith, he becomes this powerful person who even refutes the Jews in public. So we see this evangelistic side to Apollos. And that's what I just want to encourage you today with my friends and myself as well, that when we are faithful to Christ, when our eyes are set upon him and we continue to hunger for him, that will manifest in our life fruit. And that fruit will be wanting to spend time with Christ. And as we spend time with Christ, we know that uh, Apollos, the giftedness of what was given to him is to be an evangelist and apologist. We know the Apostle Paul says, I was called to be an apostle. You and I might not fit what Apollos was called to or fit what Paul was called to, but God has indeed called every single one of his children. And nobody is saved without a purpose. And we all serve a mighty purpose in the kingdom of God. And so if you are wrestling through or you're struggling with like, I don't know what, what the Lord wants to do in my life, that's okay. I think a lot of times we overemphasize my specific, unique what God is only going to do in and through me versus trying to get an understanding of all that God calls all of us as Christians to do and to be. And one of those is we're all called to make disciples. One of those callings that is genuine to all of us as Christians is we're all called to love the Lord our God. We're all called to pray. We're all called to a church body. We're all called to encourage one another. We're all called to lives of purity. All of these things are critical and more. So, don't get so hung up on, oh man, Apollos was the evangelist and Paul was the apostle. What am I? I can't, I can't fill in a one word title for what God is doing for me. Let's focus on everything that the scriptures say that you and I are to be and are called to be and what we are as Christians and continue to hunger for that. And then to continue to ask God through prayer, Lord, use me more and more for your glory and for your kingdom. Lord, use me more and more for your glory and for your kingdom. God bless you guys. We'll continue with chapter 19 next.